joining us. I um, want to say thank you for joining us. Um, our, our next coach speaker has been coaching over eight years. I think in January, she hits nine years. I was thinking about that a lot this morning about longevity and why we keep doing what we're doing. And she will tell you why, because my goodness, she has achieved elite eight times and has qualified for the ninth time for 2022. She has been in the top 10, two times top 10. 10 of all coaches. She's a superstar diamond coach. And get this, this is a non-negotiable for her. Success club. How many months in a row? 104 months in a row. If you're trying to achieve success club, that is the best foundational base for a successful coaching business. Yes, insert disclaimer here. Beachbody <laughs> depends on your uh, your skill and your, oh my gosh, it just flew out of my head. Beachbody does not guarantee any success. <laughs> it all depends on your diligence and skill. Um, her birthday is tomorrow. I love it when I have people speaking on the wake up call and it's their birthday day or week, whatever. There's a certain energy that is coming from this girl after all these years in the business. I want to also say she's from Team Royal Republic and from Pittsburgh, PA. You guys welcome in Alyssa Shoemaker. Alyssa, it is so nice to see you. Let me bring you in. All right. Hi, Alyssa. Hi, Hi sweetie. You. Hi. You know, we had a little conversation about this call and about how when I read off the stats, people just go, oh, whatever. That's not a whatever. It shows me that these have been non-negotiables to you in your in all your years as a coach. Yeah, I mean, I set out to help people, right? So I set a bar for myself every month, and that bar was to help at least five people a month. So that's been my non-negotiable since I got started. Yeah, so it's it's not that you got in early, it's that you you keep doing what you're doing because it became a non-negotiable for you. Yeah, well, and I love it. And you love it. I okay, love it. tell us a little bit about why you became a coach and I'll let you have the stage. All right, thanks so much. Well, welcome everybody. Good morning, happy Monday. It is a pleasure to be here. I have been a coach, like Sandy said, for about eight and a half years. And before I got started as a coach, I was a registered nurse and also in school for my nurse practitioner. I had just lost my grandfather to heart disease and diabetes and just felt like I was kind of up this uphill stream in healthcare. And I just really wanted to do something that impacted people now. I had been invited to multiple boot camps by my coach, but I was a bikini become a bikini competitor when I got started. I was actually competing on the MPC circuit. And so I kind of looked at home fitness like it wasn't going to be a solution for me, but it could be a solution for other people. I had been working out at the gym probably two, three hours a day, following a really restricted plan. And I had a lot of people that asked me how to get results, asking me um, different things that they could do. But I knew that they weren't going to do what I was doing in the gym. I knew most people didn't have the time to that or didn't want to make that kind of sacrifice. And so I had done Insanity um, after my third baby, and I really loved the programming. And so I kind of looked at it a little bit more, looked into it, and I really loved how we provided this total solution. We had, at the time, teaching about clean eating, really teaching about portion control, introducing the personal development aspect. And with our programming, it was really a great solution that I could hand over to somebody else and be able to help them get results. Um, like I said, it took me a little bit to really believe in the programs and the products. I actually launched my business only in doing insanity, never being in a boot camp. really didn't have a desire to be in a boot camp because I didn't know what it was all about. And it wasn't until really I started people seeing people get incredible results with 21 day fix and the portion fix that I decided to dive all in and commit to that program myself. I, I was scared to eat the carbs. I was scared to eat all of the fruit and all the things that go along with it. But I told myself, if I'm going to have my clients do this, then I better really embody this experience. And it was after I really embodied that experience, literally my life I say this, but my life changed. Um, I've just been able to really make a simple lifestyle out of fitness and nutrition. And 
after that, I was hooked and I just kept sharing it with absolutely everybody. It sounded like you were getting a little choked up there. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Cause I lived on, I mean, like I was telling my girls the other day, I mean, there was points where I was eating tilapia out of a plastic container with like eight or 12 almonds for the day and just wanting like an apple so badly. And the apple wasn't on my plan, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, it just provided so much food freedom to me. And I didn't think I was going to get like this emotional, but yeah, it's just, it changed everything for me. Well, that is uh, obvious. And um, it's still a driver for you too. You know, that story goes a long way. You'll never forget what happened with your grandfather and that, you know, really driving force to take care of people before they get to a difficult challenge in their health. Um, I know your story very well, Alyssa. Um, I want to talk a little bit about this topic because this is about getting people to a yes. Now that's, that's like the quick version of it, right? It's like you become a coach and you try to sell challenge packs and people say no. Well, there's so many things that go into how do you connect people to the right solution? It's not getting a sale. It's not getting a yes. So removing all that language, you know, get people to a yes. This was really about communication and building that relationship and helping people get into a right solution for them. So why don't you go ahead and just take it away from here, Alyssa? Okay. So the first thing that I think is really important, I think we need to have a gut check this morning on this Monday morning. I need you to really ask yourself, when is the last time that you went all in? When is the last time that you followed the program and the nutrition plan and did your personal development and followed the schedule the way that it was designed? Because when we do this, when we go all in, we really create magic within ourselves. This embodiment is what causes us to become magnetic. So when I was starting out, I didn't have that magic because I was still in this mentality of being a competitor and saying that this was good for other people, but I didn't necessarily know that it was really good for me. And so I really had to lean all in and I had to put my own oxygen mask on self on myself. And I had to do the things that I was asking other people to do over the last eight years. My business success has correlated with what's going on in my own personal health and wellness journey. And here's the thing. It's not about checking off boxes. It's about who we are in the process of doing the work that really matters. Our job is really to lead ourselves and to be embodied by this work. And I want you to know that you don't have to impress anybody. And it's not about being perfect. It's about you knowing that you can move people right now where you're at. You do have the freedom and you do have the ability to impact others along this journey right now. So we really have to drop this idea of perfection and instead embrace this idea of showing up as our best, because when we do our best over time, that will always be enough. So when I committed to the program and the process of the 21 day fix, that's really when everything changed for me. So I really want you to ask yourself today, who do you want to become in this process? Okay. And start making decisions from that place. If I want other people to really, really trust me, then I need to lead by example. And that oxygen mask has to come on first. I had to follow the nutrition. I had to follow the programming the way it was designed. And I had to go all in, right? I had to go all in on this total solution. An easy way for you to be able to transform your business and influence others like I did to take that first step is to go all in on yourself, especially this time of year. In the fourth quarter, when the world wants to go to slumber, when you are surrounded by treats and parties on every, you know, every weekend, this is your opportunity to say, no, I'm committing to myself. I'm committing to my health and fitness and really go all in on yourself. You will be that shining example. Some ideas, just go back to the basics, right? Go back to doing the 21 day fix or MBF or MBFA. Those are some great programs. You can also um, complete a body workout, right? Some take some before and afters for the next month and really commit and showing people the results that they can get from this body experience. I find that it's easiest for me to get other people started when I have committed to following the plan. And I can say that my results came from this program, this nutrition, and these supplements. There is so much beauty in being able to say, look, here's this exactly what I did. 
I last year I was had an honor to be in nine week control freak test group. And I love that program so much that I did it for the entire year back to back to back. Every single woman that came into my programming did nine week control freak. They all did Shakeology. They all did energize. They all did recover because they saw me doing that every day for a year. So no, it didn't matter what was launching. All they saw was me doing nine week control freak and getting these results. And so they all joined in on nine week control freak and got the results with me. Here's the thing. I want you to really treat your fitness and your nutrition like you are a part of a test group until the end of this year and see what it does for your business. Because there's really no sales copy that's going to help us if we're not going to be showing up our authentic selves and really showing how the total solution has changed our lives. The second part about this is talking about sales. And I think it's so funny that I'm talking about this because somebody that was in healthcare, I was like, no, like I am not a salesperson, right? But the funny thing is, is that we all are. We're all in sales. And sales, the way you look at it, is really an act of service. So you have to wrap your mind around sales and understanding that you're offering somebody a solution. It's not about fulfilling an agenda, right? But getting to know what your customers really, really need and what your customers really want, and then how we can be of service to them. There is so much power, you guys, in focusing on one. One. One post, one person, one heart, one human, one connection. Don't lose that focus of focusing on just one person. And I want you guys right now to go to the last post that you guys did and take a look. If you have five likes on that post, that is five human beings that took their time out of the day to read your entire post and then to express their love for you. And I want you to imagine those five people calling you up on the phone or those five people coming to your door and expressing that love for you. That is the power that we have. That's really the power of the connection, right? So this is why we have to really believe in people and their power because everyone deserves to be able to be able to, to be seen big and able. So before we make our offers, we need to make sure that our energy is up. We need to make sure that we are embodying our own power and that we are speaking to that rock star woman who is in front of us. We need to really own that, okay? So sit up straight and understand that you are talking to somebody that is the next generation of person who is going to change their life. And we have to respect that. So when making your offer, speak to their heart, speak to their power, and speak to their intelligence. You have an opportunity to really change their lives. And so this is something that you guys are going to do together and you're going to walk so much further together. But you got to remember that you got to keep your energy high and that we have to make sure that we're listening to what it is that our customers and clients need from us. This part is so important. So we have to make sure that we're asking the right questions and then listening. And it's in the listening is where they'll tell us of how we can really be of service. One way that I do this is I ask some clarity questions first. So I relate this back to when I was working as a nurse. I wouldn't ever just give somebody a plan or just start addressing something if I didn't necessarily know what the main cause was, right? So always getting to the root cause is the most important thing. I'm not just going to say, here, do this because I did this. I want to make sure that it's going to be beneficial for them first. So first thing I do is I ask some qualifying or some clarifying questions, okay? The clarifying questions look like this. Tell me a little bit more about your health and fitness goals. I would love to learn more about what a typical day of nutrition looks like for you. Can you tell me a little bit about your current energy level? Or can you tell me a little bit about what kind of fitness you enjoy? And then one that I love to ask is, what is one thing that would make you so excited to achieve this month? These questions help clarify for me what they're looking to achieve, but also have them looking forward to working with me in the future. I use voice messages to break down what I use and offer to for them based on their goals. And then I go into two more qualifying questions. I want them to say yes to themselves. So I ask the clarifying questions first, and then I go into the qualifying questions. A qualifying question would look like this. So I know that you really want help with your nutrition this month. 
I ask my girls to follow the nutrition plan 80% of the time. Can you make that commitment to yourself? Yes. So you're going to want to ask a couple of questions like that so that they say yes to themselves. Once they've qualified themselves again, I go into the breakdown of everything that is in the total solution package, literally everything that will relate to their goals from the year of beach body on demand and how that's going to help them not reach any plateaus because of the different programming that's available. I talk about long-term support for in the groups that I run. I talk about how all of the different recipes and meal planning guides and cooking show help our family simplify our nutrition. I talk about how Shakeology helps us so much with our cravings. I break down everything from the shaker cup to the 30 days of body to the free bands so that they know that this is an extraordinary value. Then this is the key. Close that baby with confidence. Okay. Instead of asking them any more questions, what I typically will say is, do you have a second to get signed up right now? All I have need to know is what shake flavors you would enjoy. That way, get them going towards the closing process. Occasionally, I will offer them a little PDF or something like that that maybe shows the packages if they're a little bit more visual. But that is not until I have gone through the clarifying and quantifying questions and shared the pricing with them with my own energy and my excitement and my enthusiasm. A couple of things that you can do to help you out is to practice your communication skills. Answer the following questions of what do I do as a coach? What is a challenge group? And what is all included in the total solution package? You can role play this with your success partner or with a significant other. I'll do this with my new coaches and have them send conversations back and forth with me so that I can help them with that as, as well. But the biggest thing is to trust yourself, trust your power and trust that you know what they, that you need what they have to that you need what you have to offer. Your offer will connect with them when our communication is authentic and our communication is clear. So let your courage lead the way and let your heart do the asking. Is that, are you done? Cause I don't know when you're done. <laughs> yeah. Cause you don't have my notes. Okay. Huh? So I don't think people understand what you just gave them. Cause it was pretty brilliant. The clarifying and the qualifying. It's a very great way to break down communication. What I love what you said, and it kind of talked about what I talked about in the beginning is that sales is an act of service. And at the beginning of this call, in case you guys missed it, because I know you guys come in just for Keyshawn and the coach, um, and of course, Darren, um, but we need to be a little bit more patient and a little bit more kind of people who are in the service industry. And those people are helpers. We are not salespeople. We are not sellers. We're not trying to push products on people. We are helpers. And I've said it so many times, Alyssa, you're a former nurse. Are you still a nurse, by the way? You're still a nurse. Okay. So you made a vow to help people. You're not selling them products. You're helping them, right? Yeah. So, so that communication of getting people the help that they need is brilliant. I mean, just breaking down the listening part, the active listening and figuring out how to connect them is just brilliant. So I really appreciate you breaking that down because people tend to just listen to the wake up call and then they say, I'm not, I'm not done with Alyssa yet. So hold on one second. <laughs> um, let me bring her back into the stream. Um, people listen to the wake up call in different ways. They wear a different hat. You know, they, they just say either, oh, that's what I do. I don't need this. Or they go, wow, those are a few things that I didn't do. And so I love it when people really listen and it speaks to them. And what you did today spoke to people about how they are getting people to finally own up to what they need and have that communication with a coach so that the total solution is a holistic approach. It's not just fitness and nutrition, it's fitness and nutrition and the support of a coach and an accountability group. So I appreciate you so much for breaking it down like that. And so lastly, 
the what do you think has contributed to your success of almost nine years? What's been a key factor in that success? So it's it's kind of a theme of what we've been talking about today, right? The consistency aspect. So I remember reading The Slight Edge when I first started as a coach and just understanding that that compound effect of everything that we do makes a difference. And it's the little things, right? It's the little things that are not very dramatic that we don't even feel that matter. Those are the things that really do matter. And just success, just like failure, like it doesn't just happen. It's something that progressively happens over time. So we have to understand that we see success after the person's put the work in for a while. So I took that principle and really applied it to my business. I made that non-negotiable from day one that I was going to help at least five people a month in my business. And so making sure I've always hit success club 10 um, and then showing up most days even when I didn't necessarily feel like it to my business, knowing that that compound effect and that consistency would just continue to pay off. And, you know, I look at it like this, because um, when I say that, like, Beachbody changed my life, I mean, it changed my life. And it's the personal development aspect that changed everything for me. I was somebody that just really struggled with, you know, my own self-worth, my own self-belief. I was in this idea that everything had to be perfect. And this allowed me so much more wiggle room and so much more freedom in my life. And it's because of the personal development. And it's like, you know, we're told to read 10 minutes of personal development a day or 10 pages a day. And you can look at that and you go, eh, or you can do it. And for those that do it, the magnitude of those results is just like, Ex exponential. It's amazing what can happen when you just show up and you just do these little things. So the key is to just be consistent and to just keep taking small positive actions over time. And you'll just be really amazed at what you create when you just stay with it. Yeah, I think the difference is when you say I have to or I get to, you get to coach, you made that choice, you get to do what you want to do and you love it. That's why you're still doing it after all these years. Um, thank you so much for clarifying, for qualifying. You're awesome. It was so good to have you on the call again. I appreciate you so much, Alyssa. Bye. Thank you so much for having me. Have a good day, everybody. All right. You guys, uh, that's the end of the call. I wish you all a really kind and patient week. Tomorrow is a big, big day. It's also Alyssa's birthday. <laughs> um, but it is the launch of body. So be kind, be patient, make it a great week. We'll see you here next week. All right. Bye-bye.